now I've been the police chief for a little over three years, and and it has been um, you know, it's, it's been a blessing, um, but it is without a doubt the toughest job I've ever had. Um, there are so many um, so many needs, and there is so little time to try to to meet those needs, and and I think. If, if the men and women that work out there each and every day trying to keep this community safe um, didn't take their job one call at a time and, and, and one person at a time, they would become overwhelmed and, and quit and give up. But you know, making Louisville or any community truly a better and safer place requires people that are dedicated to what they do, people that aren't going to just quit. Today is more challenging than ever for law enforcement. There, there are so many very valid questions being asked about the police and, and how we interact with people in our community. And you know, Ferguson has, has got some very good and very important questions being asked. And, and I think as you look at chiefs around the country as opposed to resistance, at least what I'm seeing from the chiefs of the larger departments is a great deal of introspection. Uh, this is a change. This is going to be, I believe, before it's all said and done, a sea change in, in the way we interact with people, the way we treat people. A couple of stories that have sort of taken me from, from the first death I encountered to, to a very significant death of one of my officers uh, and, and, and kind of how that brings me back around to, to at least finding the strength and, and it, it's not internal, it's, it's got given. Um, first death, I hadn't been on very long. There was a man that was stabbed. We were in a housing development uh, down in West Louisville. Um, he had been stabbed, he was injured. Uh, Another officer and myself gave him CPR as we waited for the ambulance to get there. Uh, unfortunately, he, he didn't survive. Um, the investigation revealed that he had been stabbed to death for not returning a pair of jumper cables. And, and I learned right then just, just really how fragile life is and how quickly your life can be taken from you. And, and it was a, a very significant thing to see uh, as, as a relatively new officer, I'd been on the street maybe six months. The second story happened to me in, in 2007. Um, I was the police chief in Glendale. I had a, an officer named Tony Holly, who had been called to the scene of a, a traffic stop. Another officer had stopped a car and uh, asked for a backup. Tony responded. Uh, the two officers went to the car and arrested the driver for a warrant. They went back to the car to arrest the front seat passenger who also had a warrant. As they approached the car, uh, the man stepped out of the car with a gun and started shooting. Tony was hit with one of the first shots. Uh, he wasn't killed immediately, but he died shortly thereafter. Uh, I um, had been around the deaths of police officers, but I had never been the police chief when something like that occurred. So. I went to the scene and, and saw what we had there. At that point, Tony had already been transported to the, uh, to the hospital. I went to the hospital and there I told his parents that he had been, been killed and walked them back to where Tony's body laid. And I can remember going home and, and feeling so empty and, and not knowing what to do with that. And as the chief, you've got to be strong. And I knew that in a couple of days I was going to be up literally in front of thousands of people um, talking about Tony and the work that he did and trying to make the men and women who worked for me and the people who live in our community feel safe and feel like there was a place to go. And over the course of preparing for that funeral, I shared with the minister what I was feeling. I had been raised in the Episcopal Church, but I really didn't know God. I really didn't know Jesus and had the opportunity to learn what I was missing. 
I, I, was, I was baptized a few months later in that church. And I now start every day the way I should have started every day in my life. And that is asking God for three things. The wisdom to know the right thing to do. The courage to choose to do the right thing to do. And the work ethic and follow through I need to make those things happen. And knowing that I don't have to have all the answers, knowing that I don't have to understand all the pain and all the, all the hurt, but knowing that there is something greater than us gives me purpose, gives me comfort, and allows me to get up and be strong every day for this community and for the men and women that work for me.